Good morning and welcome back to the channel. We are continuing with our cabin foundation. The first thing that we have to do this morning is dig a trench for our water and electric lines to run from our spring up to underneath our cabin. So we already have that marked out. We're burying our water lines well below the frost line, so we don't have to worry about any freezing. We're going to go about seven feet deep. We just don't have the machinery to do that, and that is a big task to do by hand. So we run in an excavator. We have limited time with it today. The days are super short. We only have a little bit of daylight. So Chris is in the excavator now, and let's get digging. It's at the, well, how far do you want it? Oh, um, a good bit. Put it up in front of you until it holds it. We found this method online. Apparently this has worked out really great for people living off grid in states like Minnesota and whatnot. The idea is that we have this culvert pipe that allows an air gap around your water pipe going down through. And when the cabin's complete, this will butt up to the floor of the cabin. You can allow the air from the cabin to go down in here by leaving this open to a cabinet or a closet or something of that sort. But just in case if it does freeze, we added a heat trace in case if we have to thaw out the first several feet where it goes down. We can't run the heat tape all the time because we're only on solar or generator backup. We don't have unlimited power and this area will probably never have grid power. When the cabin is complete, we'll come back and we'll build a wooden box around this, almost like framed walls, and we'll insulate it very well inside of there so that this is kind of a contained insulated part of the house essentially.
like unwrapping a present. <laughs> Find the end, the kind of the rip. Uh, don't go over that. Just let me, let me stretch my side out and see. I need you to bring it this way, like away from the columns, so we have room to run tape. We put down this plastic sheeting as a vapor barrier for underneath of our cabin. We plan to have an enclosed but vented crawl space and this vapor barrier will prevent most of the moisture from coming up out of the ground into the crawl space. Once we tape around the piers, we're going to be adding a thin layer of gravel on top so that way if we ever have to get underneath of the cabin to install insulation or plumbing, we won't have to be in the mud. Okay.
Yeah. That's what we'd have to do Hold to on. build. Make this the problem, because. Huh? You can kind of see it. It's so on it's the board. So it needs to go this way slightly. Yeah. That's, pretty good. That's really good, right there. Yeah. started before we nailed We've got all the beams lagged in place. The brackets that we use should help resist wind from lifting up the cabin and it should also help hold it in place in case of an earthquake. They have a pretty good resistance rating to that kind of load. It does cost more in lumber to run them side to side like this, but with a pier type foundation, this actually transfers more of the weight to the center pier so that your weight is more equally distributed instead of only on your outer piers. If this was a strip foundation, it would be more cost effective just to run the beams long ways. Next up, we're gonna go down through these beams and we're going to install carriage bolts through them to help them resist from spreading and also to give them a little bit more strength. We're gonna get started drilling them and putting them all in and then we'll be pretty much ready for our floor.
Our foundation is finished and we're really happy with how it turned out. The next step will be to put in our floor framing. We plan to continue working on the cabin as long as the weather and time allows. So thank you for watching and we will see you again soon.